Good morning. Welcome to the Presbyterian Church of Bella Vista. Those of you who are here, those of you who are following us on live stream today. I keep forgetting that. I'm getting old. As I said, welcome to those of you who are here, to those who are watching us live stream this morning, and to those of you who will be watching us later sometime over a recorder session off the church site. Our Christmas Eve service, a reminder, will be uh, on Thursday at 4 o'clock here in the sanctuary. Uh, Reverend Dr. Ronnie Prevost will be leading worship that day. And because he and I are on this every other time, I will be back leading worship next Sunday morning. So uh, last week we were scheduled to have a Minute for Mission. And the Minute for Mission video was here, but equipment was not functioning like it should. And there's been some upgrading in equipment going on, so we should have a Minute for Mission video today. So I will now turn it over to our technicians back there. of year, Emmanuel, and it means God is with us. God is with us means more than just God is along for the ride. It means that God values togetherness, God values relationship, and that causes us to value those things too. The Christmas joy offering is one way we join together as Presbyterians, one way we are with one another that comes up every year. Not only are we bound together by our gifts and through our giving, but our gifts change lives, joining us together with those church workers and their families who are experiencing a critical financial need through the Ministry of the Assistance Program of the Board of Pensions. These offerings join us together with the students of the schools and colleges, equipping communities of color, ensuring that the leadership for the church and world in the future will reflect the diversity that God intends for all God's creation. God is with us right now all the time, and we are with one another through our gifts to the Christmas Joy Offering. Please give generously, for when we all do a little, it adds up to a lot. Thank you for your gifts to the Christmas Joy Offering. Thank you for giving to the Christmas Joy Offering and helping me and other pastors who have a need. Thank you for believing in me, believing in Stillman, and thank you for your gifts to the Christmas Joy Offering. The envelopes are with the bulletins. If you're not prepared, you may bring it at another time. Or if you're writing a check for a day, just make it out to the church and in the memo line put uh, Christmas Joy Offering or just Joy Offering and that would be fine. Uh, it will be of good use to a number of people in our country.
Please join me in the responsive call to worship. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For the Mighty One has done great things. And holy is God's name. Let us worship God. We light this candle as a sign of the coming light of Christ. As the Lord has promised, in days to come, the nations shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the wilderness and the dry land shall be glad, the desert shall rejoice and blossom. The Lord will give a new sign. Look, the young woman is with child. She shall bear a son and name him Emmanuel. God is with us. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Please be seated. Let us confess our sins to the one whose mercy endures from generation to generation. Let us pray. Faithful God, we know that you're always there to guide us. Yet we often make plans without listening to you. 
and discover that our human agenda can drown out our ability to hear your will for us. We repent of these faults and turn to you in love. Forgive our offenses and pardon our sins that our lives may magnify your holy name forever. We offer our prayers in the name of the one who saves us, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, by the faith of Christ, your sins are forgiven. Blessed be the God of our salvation, whose mercy is everlasting. Amen. Amen. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. And now to share the peace with one another. Peace be with you, heart. Peace be with you, heart. Peace be with you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Please be seated.
Let us pray. O God, send your Holy Spirit upon us as we await the coming of your Son. Fill us with good things that we may conceive your reign on earth and glorify you according to your word. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Our first reading today is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, 2 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of a deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exalt when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Now would you join me in the responsive reading of Psalm 89. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. Your age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your steadfast love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set the crown upon a warrior and have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him. My hand will hold him fast, and my arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor shall the wicked bring him down. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and steadfast love are with him, and he shall be victorious through my name. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He will say to me, You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation.
Our second reading comes from the Gospel according to John in the third chapter. Now, this passage of Scripture is not necessarily connected to Christmas at all. But if you look at the overall meaning of Christmas and the birth of the Christ child, it has some real meaning. You remember Nicodemus had come to visit with Jesus at night and had some questions for, for Jesus, and they had this conversation going back and forth. And this is a portion that John recorded of Jesus speaking to Nicodemus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the word of the Lord. This past week, one of our local television news broadcasts featured some Christmas decorations done by a family that lives in a community here in northwest Arkansas. And the, really, the decorations were something else. As he talked to the family, they had something over 70,000 lights and a variety of things in their yard. And each night you come by, it was connected with music. Uh, coordinated with music, and each night there would be a different menu of songs. In fact, in today's newspaper, if you get that, you will discover there are a couple picture, uh, pictures taken during the day that give you an idea of what these decorations look like. And this family, family is only one of many, many families that will go to this extreme to decorate for Christmas. And they do this because for them, Christmas is a joyful time. And the decorations not only bring joy to the family that have put them there, but their hope is that they also bring joy to the people who see them. Because for them, Christmas is a time of joy. Christmas is a time to decorate. And when we think about it, We do see decorations at Christmas because they help us direct the attention of people to the meaning of this time of the year. Now, to help us understand this, think about the retail business world. For many retailers, this time is the year when they make most of the money that they make during the year. So for them, it's an important time. And you will find them decorating their stores for a couple of reasons. One, to create that feeling of joy in people. One, to invite them in to the store. All done with the hope that these people will buy Christmas gifts there. Well, if you go back many, many years ago, God decorated the sky with stars and angels to draw direct the attention of people to something important that was going to happen. A child was to be born, and not just any child. This child would be a special child, the Messiah, the one whom the people of Israel had waited for a long, long, long time. And so when we think about this, decorations become extremely important at this time of the year, Because it's a way to remind people that this time of the year is a special time. And particularly for Christians, it's a time to celebrate 
the birth of the Christ child, Jesus Christ our Lord. But this is the only reason these decorations are important because they, they're also important because they're a way we can express our joy. Now again, if we look back through the year, Christmas really isn't the only time we decorate. You walk in the store soon, it'll be Valentine's Day and so on and so on. But families really get involved sometimes in decorating for Thanksgiving and for Easter. But if you compare the decorating that's done then to the decorating that's done at Christmas, it's not the same. While joy is present then, it doesn't seem to be the same kind of joy that we find at this time of the year. So why are people so much more joyful now than they would be at Easter, Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day. It may be because of some of the traditions of this time of the year. It's a time when special family gatherings are held. It's a time when there's a sharing of gifts from one another. But there may be another reason, and that reason is found in the Christmas trees. The lights on trees remind us of the stars that were in the sky the night that the Christ child was born. The color green reminds us of an everlasting life that is ours through Christ. And the ornaments that we see on the tree, they remind us of a joy that is ours. And we're filled with that joy because God loved the world so much that he sent his son into it. And that son bore the punishment for sin. And we're joyful because if we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, then we don't have to bear that punishment because God's love was so great for us. And so, yes, it is indeed a time of joy. But decorations are also important because they are a way that we can extend an invitation to people. A number of years ago, our family lived in Cavalier, North Dakota. Now, if you want to look this up on the map, you go way up in the northeastern part of North Dakota, 75 miles north of Grand Forks, and about 10 miles south of Canada and about 15 west of Minnesota. Cavalier was a community of about 1,500 people at that time. It was kind of an area shopping center. The county had about 15,000 people in it. But Cavalier was a community that if you needed it, you could find it there. And so that was a major shopping area for the people. But it was a community that was very proud of its Christmas decorations. No smaller community around there could match them. The residents considered these decorations a way for the people to come to Cavalier and to enjoy the Christmas season. The businesses saw it as a way to invite the people to come and to shop. So they were a way in which people were invited to come to that community. But it's interesting, as I mentioned before, there were decorations present on that night when Jesus was born. The sky was decorated with stars and angels, and it was a way of God extending an invitation to the shepherds to go to Bethlehem, the place where the Savior was born. And so as we think about Christmas decorations, they're a way to invite people to come and rejoice with us over the birth of the Christ child. We invite them to come and to accept the gift of God's love as it comes to us through Jesus. 
and we invite them to accept this gift and the peace that comes with it. So when we look at Christmas, we can say it's a number of different things. And among those that we can say is that it can be a time to decorate. Now, everyone who decorates is not a Christian. Decorations don't mean the same to them as it means to us. But for those who are followers of Jesus Christ, the decorations provide us with a way that we can call attention to the meaning of this season. They're a way that we can express our joy that is ours and can be a part of the lives of others. It's a way that we can invite people to accept God's gift of love. Now, not everybody is able to decorate now. For some, it may be because of finances. For others, it may be because of age. And so Christmas decorations become important to them as it invites them to joy. And even though decorating can involve some hard work, when it's, when it's done, we can sit back and enjoy. And as we do, we can say, it is worth it. Or as one person said, when the work of salvation was completed through the birth of the Savior, his work, his rejection, his suffering, his death and resurrection, when all of us redeemed to shine like or ornaments of God's love, do you suppose God sat back, smiled, and said, it is worth it? Amen. And now let us affirm our faith. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved, if we hold the fact that Christ died for us, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, and that he appeared first to the women, then to Peter, and to the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. 
Jesus Christ is the first and the last, the beginning of the end. And he is our Lord and our God. Amen. Seated, please. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, let me share with you some things that we just learned between yesterday and today, and then I will share things on our list already. I received word this morning that Ernie Marlowe is in the Mercy Hospital with pneumonia and dehydration. And then yesterday, we had a call from Elaine Jones. She's scheduled for surgery tomorrow. And of course, she wanted to talk to Barb because Barb just came out of shoulder surgery. And Elaine will have so shoulder surgery tomorrow to repair a torn rotator cuff. It will be at 11.30, and it's going to be at Precision Surgery Center of Northwest Arkansas, which is located up in the Pinnacle Hills area. And if I remember correctly, her surgery is scheduled for 11.30, and it's an outpatient. She should be home later that afternoon. Then I also received word yesterday, uh, Paul and Joanne Chitty. Uh, remember them, older couple of our membership here who are living out on Apple Blossom and Rogers. They are both dealing with uh, some health issues now, and we should remember them in our prayers also. So let me share what we have on the list at this point. Uh, those who are still dealing with bereavement, Harriet White, you know, a former member of our congregation, her husband Jim, who died earlier this month, family of, the Royce, of Royce Neal, who died on the 2nd. And then, uh, remember our prayers also, those in hospice, uh, Barbara Sterrup, who's in hospice care at Magnolia and Rogers. And just added is Wilbur Schaefer, who is in hospice care at his home. Uh, Wilbur is dealing with cancer. Now, those who have been recovering from surgery, and we have quite a list here. Uh, Roger Zimbica from recent near knee replacement surgery. Uh, Emery Humphreys from recent back surgery, and his wife, Darcy, who has some recent heart surgery to put in a stimulator, and hopefully this will help her in her condition. Marvel Procorny, who uh, uh, had recent hospitalizations. Florence Ryder, who re recently had some stents put in, who's with us this morning in worship. Uh, Jim Ramey from recent hip replacement. Uh, Sonia Pohl, who recently was at Mayo Clinic. Uh, that's all it has here, so I'm assuming she's back home uh, in Nebraska now. Uh, Don Rhodes, uh, who had that cancer spot on his head removed, and I think uh, uh, I announced earlier that uh, uh, they had done all the tests and nothing else had showed up in his body, which was good to hear. And Karen, Sh Karen Schneider, who is now cancer-free. Uh, those are still dealing with cancer diagnosis, uh, Kathleen Litton, and Jim Jennings. Those that we consider to be confined are Sally Vanigan, Joyce Johnson, Euro Cross, Karen Prince, Joy Phillips, Hope Kenny, Suzanne Moore, Bob and Connie Rochelle, and of course Marvel. And now for those of the extended family, uh, keeping our prayers are Gerald Schnepp, who is Bernice Levin's daughter in Indiana, uh, who has very serious back problems. Uh, Tom Gadkey, who's uh, Jigs' the son, who's in a hospital in Texas with massive brain infection. Uh, Gerald and Bev McDonald's grandson, Clayton, and their son-in-law. The grandson's in the hospital in critical condition with blood infection, and the son-in-law with severe blood clots. And then Joyce and Bill, Joyce Bill Dilliman's son-in-law sister, who's dealing with stage four cancer. And of course, we always remember Dr. Larry and Inga Streshley, our missionaries in the Congo. Let us pray. Oh God, it's a time of the year when people are filled with joy as they respond to the lights and decorations, the music and the prospect of giving gifts. We pray that they will not forget that there is another reason to be joyful. God's love that came to the world in a special way in the birth of the Christ child. 
But we must admit, oh God, that there's not easy to be joyful this year. Many have suffered and died because of the pandemic. Our nation is experiencing turmoil because of conflict between races and heated disagreements between members of political parties. And because of the divisions we have, we pray that people will have patience and understanding with one another, that name-calling will cease, and people and their property will be treated with respect. We pray that the peace that came into the world on the night our Lord was born will enter into the lives of all, and that the divisions we have will begin to heal. Well, God, each day is a difficult one for those in our armed forces, especially for those who are separated from their families and loved ones. And during the holidays, especially Christmas, it can become more difficult for some. <clears throat> we pray for all in the armed forces that you will keep them safe. We pray for their families and loved ones that you will comfort them. And we pray that they all will feel your presence and love with them. We offer prayers today for all who are on our prayer concerns list, for the session as it leads us during this time without a pastor, for the deacons as they carry out their pastoral ministry, for the pastor nominating committee as it does its work in seeking a new pastor, for our liaisons from Presbytery who will guide our pastor nominating committee as it works. God, we pray that the joy we feel at this time of the year will remain not just with us, but as something that will move from whom we come in contact. And we offer these prayers this morning in the name of your Son, who taught his disciples and us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As each Sunday, it is time for our morning offering. The offering we received is not just for us, but it's for our congregation and the work it does to share the love with each of us and for those outside of the walls of our church.
Let us pray our response and prayer of thanksgiving. Holy God, your love is magnified in the gift of your Son, whom you so freely share with us. Bless these gifts that we offer to lift up the lowly and fill the hungry in your coming reign of justice and peace. In Christ's name, amen. Several announcements this year. First, I have a couple of first send this morning. One to our musicians for the work that they've done in preparation, preparation for today and also for their commitment and dedication through the entire time that we've been dealing with the pandemic, whether it's when we were recording and you were not able to be present and even now. I, I personally am very grateful for that. The other thing I'm very grateful for, if you haven't noticed, we have a monitor in the back of the church now. We can see when things come up on the screen. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that I can read them all, but we know that, that there, other than that, had to depend on Ronnie down here and Peggy, who were watching the screen, and then they would let me know that something was there. So I'm grateful for the worship committee and the session for uh, spending the money to do that. One suggestion that I made a long time ago, and nobody's really bought onto this thing yet, is you need a clock back there. <laughs> and the reason I say that is several of the parishes I served had more than one congregation in it. And so I was very conscious of time uh, in order to get from one place to the other. And for example, in Cavalier, I had three I had to deal with. And, and I guess that makes me more conscious than other pastors have been here. Maybe someday there'll be something up there. I may not be preaching, but it might be there. Uh, I've always already mentioned that uh, the Christmas Eve service, the time for that, we've already dealt with joy offering. Uh, a suggestion was made a couple weeks ago, and I'm not sure, uh, Ron, I can't remember. Remember, I'm getting old, so I can't remember whether Ronnie mentioned this last week. A suggestion was made that uh, we, like Ronnie and I, or somebody else may be filling in, rather than go clear down to the end of the fellowship hall, uh, because some people just use the main entrance, perhaps we could stand closer. And you may notice that Ronnie and Ron David last week stood at the door to connect the hallway. So we'll be back somewhere in that area uh, as, as you leave. Uh, the other thing, does anybody know anything about the roses that are I do. Okay, Steve. The roses. Well, wait. Would you do me a favor? Take the mask off. Thank you. Microphone. Microphone. I can't hear you. And now, as Thank you were saying. Thank you, Mary. As I was saying, uh, one of our anthems today was Lo How a Rose Air Bloometh. And I thought it'd be appropriate to purchase some roses and give to my group here as kind of a token of my appreciation for their hard work for the last mm, nine months now or whatever. It's been a while. So these are going to go to us, okay? <laughs> Sorry about that. I would like to give one to everybody. Some of you also, while I, might, while I have the mic, some of you might be wondering where Christy Clark had been. Mm -hmm. A couple of weeks ago, I get a uh, phone message from Christy saying, Steve, I'm sorry I can't sing. I think I have laryngitis. As you know, Christy teaches elementary music, as I did for 35 years uh, in Goodman, I believe, right? Good, in Goodman, Missouri. And so she's been battling with voice problems for the last couple of weeks. And she's not quite ready. She can speak now, but she can't sing 
a soprano voice. So we're hoping, in fact, next week you'll see Christy, but she'll be on the piano, okay? So that'll be a special, special thing. Okay? That's it. All right, thanks, Steve. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? If not, our final hymn is Go Tell It on the Mountain. Indeed, Christmas is a time to decorate. It's a time when we share our joy with others and what joy we really have to share. That Christ was born, that Christ ministered, that Christ died for us, that Christ rose for us. What joy. And so as we go and tell it on the mountain, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And may God fill your hearts with his joy and peace. Amen.